Okay, I got the red smoke. Gun run! North and south! West of the smoke! West of the smoke! Okay, copy. West of the smoke. I'm looking at danger close now. Come on with it, man. They give it to me. I need it. Get cleared hot. Captain, cleared hot. All right, you ready? Yeah. Have I told you the latest update about my dad? <laughs> no, but I'm excited. All right, so we have a uh, we have a text thread uh, text thread called Tales from Grampy, mm-hmm. and it's my sister, my brother in law, me and Leah. Mm-hmm. There's some pretty dope updates on there <laughs> yeah, of things that yeah. people would be shocked to know. Yeah, he was down in San Diego, and he was talking to my sister, who, for clarity, is a nurse practitioner. Mm-hmm. She has spent many years working in the medical world. Yeah. And he was uh, all fired up. He goes, yeah, my doctor, you know, is my blood pressure med. He's got me on less. I went from 10 milligrams to one. Look at this new pill bottle. It says one. OMG. <laughs> <laughs> was he being serious? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And my sister was trying to tell him there's just a space between the one and the zero. Yeah. That's yeah. 10 milligrams. Yeah. Tales from Grampy is fire. That sounds like an amazing text thread. <laughs> you should send me screenshots every once in a I while. I will. I will. Well, yeah, there's some good ones. Uh, I won't pull it up right now. And if you uh, didn't know about this text thread, Dad, and you happen to lift, listen to this, uh, you know, it's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're not sorry. I'm not. And what I know is that that thread's never going to end yeah. because it's it's a journey of exploration. Mm-hmm, for it sure. It's a journey of exploration. Agreed. Yeah, he told me, you know, I'm checking his mail for him while they're on uh, vacation. Mm-hmm. He goes, yeah, I'm the third mailbox, the third tower. Yeah. Yeah, they're the fifth. <laughs> you know how I know that? I fucking check that key in every goddamn you. mailbox. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, I wasn't in a rush because I yeah. damn near snapped that key You're off like, trying what to- the fuck? God. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. All right, dude, you know how this works. This is your yeah. show. Uh, all right, we're going to start it off. I asked you this- uh, when we were hunting, but, uh, you mean when we were driving around in a car. Yeah. <laughs> kind of hunting. Yeah. Uh, but it is true okay. that, uh, some Middle Eastern men have sex with goats. Correct. Yeah. Not all of, but you have seen it. Not all. Well, have I seen it in 8k with my own eyes versus seen it on the internet? Let me tell you what the remote weapon systems that we would use for like base security that were kind of manned at all times had on them. You know, really good sensors, sometimes mm-hmm. thermal. There's a lot of times where people think that they're doing things that can't be seen, that can clearly be seen through the right. invisible spectrum, mm-hmm. the IR spectrum, if you will. And yeah, I have seen people fuck livestock. <laughs> Does that does that fill your cup up? Does that warm your soul? <laughs> it's just so crazy <laughs> to me. Is it crazy or is it an indication of the difference in what we have and have available to us versus yeah. what they have and have available to them? Yeah. If you were not allowed, here's a better question for you. If you were not allowed, if you didn't even have the option, you had no car, right? Mm-hmm. No airplane, no helicopter, your life and what you knew of the world was based off of what your eyes could see. And by that, I mean where your feet could take you and then what your eyes could see. Not a lot of women around. Mm -hmm. Would you fuck a goat? (laughs) I I want to say no. Yeah, but you're considering it. Well, because I don't know. Obviously, they do. So it's like, well, if I was in that situation, if I was one of them, what would I do in there if I hadn't seen a woman in 30 years? Or ever. Ever. Yeah, exactly. So what would you like, do? Well, being me, I wouldn't do that. I feel like you would. <laughs> I feel no, like I, you could be... I personally would not. I feel like you could be talked into it. You're a malleable no. young man who is not <laughs> no. sure yet in your morals. We're getting you there. We're sharpening <laughs> you into the blade that I know that the world needs that you don't recognize <laughs> just yet, and you will cut like a fucking knife through butter mm. for the rest of your life. You'll look back on your deathbed, and you're like, you know, that goat conversation was important. It helped me understand... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a very formative conversation. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm glad we can explore the depth of your malleable psyche together. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like you would fuck a goat. Well, I, I wouldn't. That's what I'm telling you. <sighs> what if you knew you never were going to see a woman? 
That's the thing is I don't know. Like, okay, would you if you were in that situation? No. I'm not a goat fucker. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Neither am I. Yeah, but I, when you say it, I just don't believe it. You know? Okay. Well, that's you don't have to believe it. I don't think anybody will. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I, I don't need anybody to believe it. As long as I believe it, it's fine. All right. So, anyways. Have fun in your DMs after that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I just won't look. Yeah, that's actually the best yeah, strategy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I sent you a video of the Sora uh, AI yeah. video generator. Yeah. Pretty I crazy. Uh, it was unbelievable. I'm, I'm curious as to when they will release it. Me too. I would actually, you know what? Pull an example of that up if you can, because if yeah. people haven't heard of this, it's I don't, insane. Yeah, I don't know the impact that it's going to have on the content or media industry, but essentially, if you're familiar with, what would it be, MidJourney, which is right now a written text to a visual image, mm -hmm. the examples that I saw, and I always get a little hesitant, you know, these companies, when they put this stuff out, are showing like their optimized the version best. of this. Well, they show on this website a few duds. Okay. Yeah, and it's, it's oh, later yeah, down. It, and well, and that's the reason they said that they hadn't released it yet. So yeah. imagine for people who are familiar with Midjourney, instead of getting a picture, you're you're essentially getting a movie. Yeah. And again, if this is iteration one, yeah, imagine what is a dozen iterations later look like. Is it indistinguishable? Does this right. completely disrupt the movie industry? Well, and this is, I mean, there are some things you can see that it's like, okay, this isn't exactly real sure. life. But if you just saw this in passing, you'd be like, oh, this is just a scene from a TV show or a movie. And I wonder, not that I work on TV shows or movies, but I know that they have like first unit directors, second unit directors. And a lot of the times the second unit directors are getting all the background shots or shots mm -hmm. of traffic or establishing shots and all that stuff. Does this remove the need for that? And then you just start right. typing it out? Exactly. Because, I mean, judging from this, you can Click make on that a... top where it says one of nine. Let's yeah, see what yeah. else they got. I bet you got... The, the one of the dogs was ridiculous. This one, like, you can kind of tell. But it's still really good. Well, yeah, Michael. They're woolly mammoths. So yeah, you can okay. kind of tell. Whatever. This one's pretty crazy. Why does he have a knit hat on? Because that's... They uh, put that in the description. All right. Fuck. This, this one is, this is, is insane. Like, this one's like real life. This looks like an Apple TV screensaver. Yes, that's exactly what it looks like. I would not be able to distinguish that from not being AI generated if that came up on my TV when the yeah. screensaver. Well, that's the thing. It's like you can't tell on this. Like it looks like, like uh, this is a completely fictional place. This doesn't exist anywhere in the world. I think it does actually. It says waves crashing against the rugged cliffs along Big Sur's Garay Point. Right, but what I'm saying is like... So it does exist. Let's just oh, stop it, for a second I didn't, I didn't and acknowledge read the, I the fact. I didn't read the thing. Yeah, this is real. Okay, well, that's when you... That's a similar when you were like, why is he wearing a red hat? Yeah, okay. Anyways. That one's... The animation one. That's one's, like a Pixar movie, though. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. What's the next one? Uh, uh, That's some underwater shit, I think. Yeah. Man. This one's crazy. Like, that looks like a real video somebody took. It does. Yeah. What's the eighth? Pirate ships. Pirate ships. Now, this one I can... Is that like pirate ships and coffee? Yeah. Yeah. And... Wow. Yeah, that one's pretty... This one's in insane. Man sitting on a cloud reading a book. Yeah, if, for people who are audio only, go to openai.com slash Sora, S-O-R-A, and you can look at all these videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the velocity that these things are coming out and improving. Yeah. I mean, I look at it from even, let's just say, the podcast. If we wanted to do standalone episodes and we're covering a certain topic, you know, there's a whole like aftermarket ecosystem of cutting things up into shorts and taking an hour conversation into five minutes. Yeah. But then being able to write in scenes like this and add it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of like searching on the internet for stuff that may work, you could literally create exactly what it is that exactly. you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. With, I mean, at a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the cost. How quickly, once this is released, do you think people will turn it into porn? They're going to try very quickly, but if you go down on this, it says it has safeguards against that. Yeah. Um, no, granted, somebody could definitely break those safeguards. Um, I think it's way down at the bottom. 
let's assume they probably don't want it used for that. Yeah. I would give it less than 24 hours until somebody jailbreaks that shit mm -hmm. and is using it. Exactly. To for generate fake porn. Yeah. Of some girl that they like or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, we're heading into a wild new world. Yeah. Where is your generation going to take us, Michael? <laughs> Nowhere good. <laughs> I have my concerns. <laughs> yeah, I do too, honestly. <laughs> we're going to need you to lead us. Uh, yeah. Are I, you capable and ready to lead us? I can do that, I guess. No, you absolutely could. <laughs> Uh, but here's like their safety. Yeah, misinformation, hateful content, bias. Yeah, yeah. Good luck with the bias one. That's kind of scary too because they decide what the bias is. Until there's a singularity and then the machines decide what the bias is. <laughs> yeah. Because again, this is, you know, AI, this is a, this is a, I know chat GPT is a large language learning model. Mm -hmm. So it basically just has the entire English language fed into it and it can reference and array information but it's you know what i mean it's not like ai mm -hmm. this is probably i'm sure and i'm not even going to begin to describe or unpack what this is but yeah when we have the singularity and the machines think for themselves well let me show you a video this is the video tyler showed me yesterday and okay. you were like just wait it just yeah, okay what do you save got? it so it's let's see figure one Think you're on AI conference. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's this one here. Just to unveil the world's most advanced combination of to engage X tasks with not red apple on a plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate. Is that the robot talking? Yes. With your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? Sure thing. Oh, boy. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. He adds an uh in there. Or it, I guess. Great. So based on the scene right now, oh, boy. where do you think the dishes in front of you go next? The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Dude. Wait, <laughs> How quickly, though, until somebody can buy that robot and they say, hey, unzip my pants. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> – after you left, that's exactly where the conversation went <laughs> with me and Tyler. <laughs> it's straight to sex robots. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I understand enough about humanity to know that that yes. is – 100 percent it'll be like hey go. robot thing where's the apple but like, hey, the apple is right here <laughs> hey robot thing put the apple in one hand and my dick in your other <laughs> i mean that's the way it's gonna go that's literally the velocity that it would go well yeah that's 100 percent. and there i mean there are already companies making sex robots and so imagine what they can do with this type of technology that thing needs to be put into um, one of those massive machines that chews up vehicles and spits them out into little pieces. <laughs> yeah, We're going to work for that yeah. thing in a short period of time. I, don't, I mean, I don't know. And that's like, what's crazy is this isn't a pre-programmed, according to them, it's not a pre-programmed uh, program. It's doing this all real time. If I was a company trying to sell a product, I would say that as well. And then I would ask yeah. it very, very specific things that it has practiced answering over and over and over right. again. Well, that's why I said according to them. Like yeah. It's a oh, if it's happening, just happening in real time. So you just happen to have that crumpled paper sitting in a basket. Right. You haven't practiced that. Okay. Yeah. You know, I get it though. Yeah. But I think the point still stands. This is a yeah, we're gonna crazy work the leap. Soon. Yeah. 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 <sighs> Even if this is like a pre- trained response which is crazy we're even saying that we can train a robot to do that yeah i don't know how any of that works i don't either yeah what else you got michael you said you had some bangers today mm -hmm. you say that every time though i think honestly i've been so how about the guy that lit himself on fire the airman did you see that no really to protest uh the palestine uh shit you know there are ways to get your message across. And uh, that is a way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the most effective way. And you obviously only get one shot at it. And I feel like 
Nothing changed after that. Of course, and that's what I'm saying. I'm, you know, that's a way. I, this probably won't show it, but I did see a video where it engulfed him. In I'm flames. assuming he died. Oh, he died. This yeah. is very similar to the monk in Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, except I think less impactful because I mean that image is cared. iconic and associated yeah. very often with Vietnam. Um, Yeah, I mean, we're not going to be able to find the video. So here's what I'll say about that. I, there are so many ways that you could get people's attention that don't include lighting yourself on fire. Um, I worry about the mental health of some people. And I'm not saying that he didn't believe what he believed. Uh, But to get to a place where you think that the only way that people are going to pay attention to me is if I literally kill myself by dousing myself in something flammable and lighting myself on fire. Yeah. That man needed help. And I'm sorry that, he, sure. that he didn't get it. You know, yeah. leg- legitimate message or not legitimate message. There's just so many other ways that you could have an impact on this world because I bet you what he thought was going to happen and the I hadn't heard about it, which doesn't mean shit because I haven't heard about a lot of things, but probably not the end result that he was right hoping well that's for. the thing is it kind of blew over in a week and then nobody talked about it yeah that's rough <laughs> so it's like that's rough yeah 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 what else um oh how about the uh boeing whistleblower mysteriously dying people shoot themselves in the back of the head all the time yeah yeah it's a very common occurrence <sighs> i do my best to not be conspiratorial but come on. And but sometimes <laughs> the world really fucking makes it hard for me to yeah, not be yeah. conspiratorial. I did hear that that had happened. I to be honest, I hadn't uh followed it very closely. I don't What was he actually whistleblowing about? Just the general safety at Boeing? Yeah, so he was a I think quality assurance manager at oh, one QA, of the QC, plants. okay. Yeah, and then uh he basically was calling them out saying they use parts from the scrap bin and all this kind of all this stuff where they probably didn't want that to come to light. And I think either he had just testified or he was about to testify. He was in between testimony. Yeah. And he died. So the non-conspiratorial side of my brain says, imagine the stress that you would be under Mm -hmm. as an individual getting ready to go toe to toe with a company like Boeing. Right. That not only has, um, Tyler probably told you about this. So yeah, by the time this episode comes out, he'll already be there. He's off enjoying spring break with his girlfriend. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was flying on a Boeing plane. I think the, what is it, Supermax or something like that? Whatever one of their models. One of them, yeah. He was on Alaska Airlines. Sometimes on Alaska Airlines, when you're in flight, the emergency door doesn't maintain connection with the aircraft. And by sometimes, I mean, I only know of one example of yeah, that. Yeah, there's one incident. But yeah. it's a pretty concrete example mm-hmm. of what could happen. Apparently, his girlfriend's like, well, you're going to die. I'm like, that's spectacular. You guys yeah. should work on um, how you communicate. <laughs> Maybe we could discuss that there's a lot of things between taking off and ending up in a fireball. Mm-hmm. But it had even made its way down to him because he went on and researched because I believe Alaska uses a lot of the Boeing aircraft. He went yeah. on and researched and was like, oh, shit, I'm on one of these airplanes. Yeah, They have massive military contracts as well. They're a huge company. As a whistleblower, imagine the stress of of doing that and going toe to toe with an organization of that size, knowing that they have the resources and manpower to grind you into dust. Mm -hmm. I could see that. And I don't know anything about the guy's previous health condition. I can totally see if there were some previous conditions that terminating the place where it could kill you. Stress is real, right? It's, it's, it's lethal at certain doses. Do I think that's what happened though? I don't know. I saw an interview of, one of that guy's friends that said the whistleblower had told him that he would never commit suicide. He wasn't suicidal. Blah, Did blah. they declare the type of death, though, or the cause of death? I think I don't know. Yeah, let's look this up. I bet you it was not ruled as suicide. So this is found dead in the US. What day is that? That's eight days ago. He's found dead. Uh, you've been given evidence. Oh, whistle- God, it's going to... Uh, no, let's find it, though. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, man, he was blowing the whistle on a lot of things. Keep going down. 
uh, after retiring. The time of his death had been in Charleston. Okay, keep going. Formal death. He's come. Okay, he he had to uh, had been due to undergo further questioning on Saturday. When he did not appear, and uh, inquiries were made at the hotel. He subsequently found dead in the truck at the hotel car park. Uh, it doesn't say how. Uh, keep yeah, going down. Um, that's interesting. It doesn't say how. Well, they have to have time to do an autopsy. This yeah. is eight days old. I'm not sure exactly when he died. Um, I wouldn't be shocked to find that it was a natural cause of death. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also wouldn't be shocked to find that he accidentally shot himself in the back of the head. Uh, yeah. Even though I think it would have said that. If there was a firearm involved, I think it would have said that. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. But very, I don't know, suspicious. Yeah, but sometimes suspicious things happen in life, yeah. you know? Yeah, Just because the breadcrumbs are all pointing in one direction doesn't, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that there's a conspiracy afoot. And the thing about conspiracy theories and why people can get so hooked to them is a lot of the times they have essence, an essence of the truth in that. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they're legitimately just found to be true. Yeah. So it... it it blows oxygen on the coals of sometimes things that I don't necessarily think are, in fact, conspiracies. Yeah, for sure. For this one, I would want to see the uh, autopsy. Yeah, I think that's the most important because just then we would actually have a clue as to what happened. Assuming it wasn't an agency plant doctor mm. that works for the man. <laughs> that's probably that's the most likely scenario, actually. It's possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I've uh, actually been nervous now about going on a Boeing plane. I feel like in general, you carry a certain level of nervousness and anxiety. I uh, think your generation does. Yeah. I think this is somewhat well-founded, though. You have one data point over however many number of aircraft are out there that are flying on godly amounts of flights every day. This just said that he said there was a 25% failure rate in something. I don't remember what. Okay. Anyways, I don't know. I guess more than any other type of aircraft. Do you feel like your generation is more anxious? Um, yeah, actually. I do feel like that. How come? What do you think causes it? Uh, I don't really know. I think part of it would be the constantly being able to know what everybody else is doing. Um, it's fair. Yeah, through social media or or constantly being bombarded with information and being told what to think or right you know there's a lot of catastrophizing that I find goes on both in traditional media and social media mm-hmm. it's a tough one yeah I don't know. in general I'm among I guess my peer group one of the less anxious and like high strung people do you know a lot of people that you're uh that are your age that are on like uh, antidepressant or anti-anxiety meds? Um, I have a really good friend who recently uh, got on them. Um, and that was kind of a shock to me. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. okay, interesting. Um, but I know, and, but I also don't really dig into, you know. Yeah. And I feel like people aren't very forthcoming with that information. Yeah, depending on the level of friendship that you have or the depth of uh, yeah. And trust that might not necessarily come up. Yeah, it, I don't know. I feel like a level of anxiety. Not, I don't know if my generation is necessarily any better, but I don't know. I don't know either. You guys are a little twitchy, a little bit on edge. Yeah. You know. What yeah. else you got? Um. Did you see <laughs> Strickland? Uh, calls out Navy SEALs and challenges them to do a day of training with him. It was a week. Or a week or whatever, yeah. Did you see that? You don't follow shit, do you? I was I just follow on the, some things. I was just on the PBD podcast where I went very hard on the paint on this particular issue. Oh, really? Yeah, and ended up posting on my social media uh, an apology uh, to the guy that I went a little bit too hard on the paint for. I saw the apology. Yeah, he'll be. he's booked for the podcast next month. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we're going to have the opportunity to sit down. Yeah, I saw that. Um I don't know Sean Strickland at all, but I feel like, and I say this based off a post that I saw him make the other day, where he was completely, I think, being open and honest, talking about how he is worried about his own mental health. I think what we're seeing with Sean is a mental health crisis that is playing itself out over social media. Yeah. He has an innate ability to insert foot directly into mouth. (laughs) 
a few times. Yeah. yeah. Also with that, he's at a level of uh, fame and recognizability that I don't I don't understand it. I don't know how anybody would actually tolerate that particular microscope mm-hmm. that well. But you know, my take on that video is 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 really simple. We're comparing apples and bowling balls. Right. He's talking about having seals come and train for a fight week. He would absolutely maul, beat the living shit out of almost every seal that I know, myself included. Yeah. The guy's I mean, a professional fights for fighter. A living. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I can understand where Jimmy was coming from. He and I disagree on, I think, what he, he – Jimmy and I disagree on – what we feel like Sean was saying in the message and the overall implications of that. And I actually really look forward to sitting down and talk with him about it. Yeah. But I give a shit if we end up agreeing or not. We'll have a great conversation. Yeah, yeah for sure. It'll be what it is. Um, there's also a, a level of, you know, theater. How do you, in the mm-hmm. social media world where it's his job when it comes to his sponsors, and it may even actually help him get the fights that he wants to gain attention and have notoriety, whether he's doing it the right way or the wrong way is up for debate. But he it rewards him a little bit to be a provocateur, right? For sure, it really does. Yeah. Uh, so I get that aspect of the game, um, but it it to me it's not it's not an assault or an offense to the SEAL community. He could have said the same thing about Green Berets or you know whatever it may be, right? Um, for whatever reason, SEALs do get a lot of press, and oftentimes it's not good. I don't think it's a good thing for the community, whether it's good or bad press. I think they would be much better served if they went a little bit more behind the curtain or returned back to behind the curtain the way they were pre-9-11. Yeah. Uh, which you can't put the cart back on the horse on that one, really. Um, they could kind of modify that, I guess, going forward a little bit. But it's uh, – that stuff does not – It's like, it just – it it's water off a duck's back. Right. right? It yeah. doesn't yeah. – it doesn't drive some crazy emotional response from me. I get the game that he's playing. I think I understand what he was trying to say. I don't take it as an offense to the SEAL team. I have nothing but respect. I didn't understand fighting, the game of fighting that he is playing, right? Because he still is playing inside of a rule set, right. especially the physically exhausting nature of how hard they train until I yeah. started doing jujitsu. Yeah. Like, I get it. It's it, what he, what I think he was talking about has actually nothing to do with what the SEAL community or pipeline or training has anything to do with. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I saw that and I was like, huh, I wonder what Andy thinks. Like, I didn't think you'd be mad at all. Like, no, it, you, it takes you, quite you a bit to get like that. But. No, it takes quite a bit to get me to that level. Yeah. Um, but I get it. You know, play the game you want to play it. The, yeah. the consequences will be what they are. The response is going to be what they are. And, and he's the one who chose to make that video. So he gets to deal with the, the responses from that. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. What else? Um, these are real easy today. I thought you did your homework. <laughs> well, you already knew about some of these, which is makes it less yeah. fun. Uh, I'm a man of the world. I have my <laughs> finger on the pulse. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I think I saw an insider interview with you. Where you rated like movie? Clips. Oh yeah, yeah, I did that yeah. years ago. I just thought that was funny. I was like, "Oh, there's Andy." That this is what you're bringing to today's conversation. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Have you heard of the grievance studies? No, no, no. We're gonna go back to what you just said. What in the fuck? <laughs> I thought was your we point? were done. What was the point of you bringing that up? That that doesn't help our conversation at all today. Okay. Uh, how? Like, was that fun for you? God, you're backpedaling <laughs> as fast as you possibly can, aren't you? It was no, okay. I just, yeah. I happened to be in LA and they asked me to do it. So I was able to go to a studio for like an hour yeah. and they play videos. I'm not, you know this, I'm not a huge fan of military movies because they're mm-hmm. wildly inaccurate. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now let's move on to the, have you heard of the grievance studies? No. So these are. Can I do one against you? Uh, yeah. These are a group of studies. Okay. Fake studies. Oh, stop it. That they uh, submitted to uh, this very high. Is this like the hierarchy of dogs in? Uh, yes, dog I do. Yes. I have heard about this. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, these guys got in a substantial amount of trouble with the academic community. Yeah, yeah. They had they basically published peer review studies on shit that was completely made up. <laughs> yeah. And I deeply respect the game. It, I. It's and you know why the, they did it? They did it to highlight the flawed yeah, system that it is. to yes. how shitty or the shitty articles that these journals are publishing. I don't remember the journals. The trio set out with the intent to expose problems in what they called grievance studies, referring to academic areas where they claim a culture has developed in which only certain conclusions are allowed mm-hmm. and put social grievances ahead of the objective truth. 
As such, the trio, identifying themselves as leftists and liberals, described their project as an attempt to raise awareness of what they believe was the damage that postmodernism and identity politics-based scholarships was having on leftist politics, uh, political projects, as well as the science of, well, as well as on science and academia more broadly. God, they wrote twenty articles that pr- promoted deliberately absurd ideas and morally questionable acts, and submitted them to various peer-reviewed journals. Jesus. Oh, what's some of the best ones they have? Let me see here. Uh, the best one is the dog park one, yeah. in my opinion, which I don't know if this will. This is worth a Google. Yeah, if you go over to Wikipedia, yeah. go to Grievance Studies Affair. I deeply appreciate stuff like this because it can highlight flaws in the system by using the system against yes. itself. Yes. And I think it's actually essential that people – I'm not advocating that people – do particularly this, but I believe it is essential for systems to constantly be pressed upon and bent where need be yes. to make sure that they are actually to legitimate. Show, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it was like sexual hierarchy of dogs in a. Oh, so what do you got? Human reactions to rape culture and queer performativity at urban dog parks in Portland. Fuck Oregon. me. <laughs> Peer review study. And they, this one, uh, I think it was, it was one of these. They gave it an award for like outstanding journalism. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If so for people, when they hear things like, oh, this is peer reviewed literature, this is an example of people trying to show you how that system can, in fact, be flawed and that how yeah. people can hide total bullshit in a system that a lot of people think is above reproach. I'm fucking here for it. It's so funny. Yeah. In the dog park one, they claimed to have like studied the genitals of like thousands of dogs. And it's like, Fuck yeah. it's so funny. The let's see, they in one of them, I don't remember which one it was, but they basically who are they to judge? Overcoming anthropometry and f- and a framework f- for fat bodybuilding. <laughs> in that one, they argued that it was something like basically the um, hold on going in through the back door. <laughs> Challenging straight male homeostasis and transphobia through receptive penetrative sex toy use. This is a fucking published study, and it got published. That's yeah. what's insane. I'm probably gonna be reading that study tonight. There's a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, they were on Joe Rogan when they initially did this. That's where I heard about it. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't know it was called the. Yeah. What are these things called? The like uh, grievance, grievance study hoax. Yeah. Like I said, I think it is essential that systems that people tout as being impenetrable are constantly Mm -hmm. pressed on. Yeah. And this should be highlighted. And what you would hope, I think, as a rational person, is that if this can happen, this system has to be fixed. Yeah. And if they didn't fix it, I hope this shit happens again. Those titles are fantastic. It's so so amazing. And look, and and, an ethnography of restaurant masculinity. So they say restaurant and that's like a hooters so like hooters style yeah. restaurant sexual conquest male control and masculine toughness in a sexually objectifying restaurant <laughs> god and i bet the <laughs> academic community was just they, yeah they yeah. loved it dude they were like oh this is so good yeah okay yeah but they and then they got in trouble for this because which they they said that they uh published fake um uh experiments which is technically true like that is true but do your goddamn research exactly you know yeah but the the whole point that was well that wasn't even the point the whole point was to say hey look how stupid you guys are yeah publishing all this bullshit fuck yeah and i i, I I'm support here it a hundred percent yeah it's so amazing <laughs> all right what else here i got one for you oh yeah that's right what are your thoughts on tattoos you ever going to get any? Yeah, I want to get some. What do you want to get? Um, like, no regrets? <laughs> yeah. That, do you even know what movie that's from? I recognize that it's a meme, but I don't know where it's from. <laughs> no regrets. It's my credo. No regrets. Huh? Not even a single syllable? <laughs> that actually, I think I've seen it. What movie is that? I don't know the name off the top of my head. It's a Jennifer Aniston flick where they're like a fake family driving down to Mexico. Yes, I have seen that. I okay. have seen that. Yeah. Um yeah, what is it? It's like the vacation or something. I don't remember. It's 100% not that. But <laughs> what are you thinking tattoo wise? Um, I would like to get a diamond back 
rattlesnake. No, you're you're joking. No, I do want to get that. You're joking. You have a frog skeleton for right now. <laughs> what are you gonna get it covered up? Yeah. What are you gonna get? Singing a My Little Pony with just a huge hog. <laughs> That is actually, you should do That'd be that. dope, right? That'd be so awesome. Be like My Little Pony, his head would be down this direction, and then his hog would just wrap around. That would be epic. Yeah. Um, explain the Diamondback. Are you um, talking about a snake, right? Yes, a snake. Okay. Uh, Have so, you ever seen one? Uh, I've seen a rattlesnake, but not a Diamondback rattlesnake. Okay. How does this have its hooks into you? Here. Because the, uh, so it's from the Gadsden flag. I don't even know what the hell that is. Oops. And but I don't want to get like the oh, Gadsden. Don't, why don't you just call it the "Don't Tread on Me" flag? Because it's called the Gadsden flag. Yeah. Well, don't make us dumb people feel dumber. <laughs> um, if you would have said the "Don't Tread on Me" flag, I'd be like, yeah. "Oh yeah, I know what you're yeah, talking yeah. about." Yeah. So you pompous fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I just like what this represents. But I don't want to get this whole thing because people who. Re- fly this are generally say it there's just just a generally negative stereotype what would that stereotype be uh let's use our big boy words (laughs) it's very like Mm -hmm. like punisher skull you know what i'm saying because i've heard i've heard you rag on the punisher skull before and it's kind of the same thing okay and so i don't want to be like i want it to be more subtle than that you want to subtly say don't tread on me <laughs> I mean, I get the irony, but yes, yeah. yes. The additional irony is is that it's not that hard to tread on you. I was just beating your ass at jujitsu not long ago. Yeah, not physically. I'm not talking physical. Oh, you don't want me to emotionally tread on you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I guess what I'm saying is like I am a big fan of liberty in general. Okay. What's and, your favorite expression of liberty? Um. Basically, being able to do what I want without interference from a large organization, like a corporation. Good luck with that, depending on what it is you want to do. I challenge you to go walk down Main Street, just cock out. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't want to do that. Yeah, but I want you to. And now I actually (laughs) want you to wear a pair of like Louis Vuitton red high heels. No, don't tread on me, (laughs) Andy. Okay. But you would, and you doing that would be your expression of people not treading on you. I'm trying to help you express who you are and what you want people to understand. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't really understand <laughs> what you just said right there. That doesn't matter. Okay. So wh- where would you get this? Oh, you get it on your arm. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Would it wrap around your arm? Would it be just mm, the not, profile? Not completely. I was thinking start at the shoulder, go down to like the elbow. Okay. Yeah. All right. What else you got? What's your second tattoo? I haven't thought a lot behind. Oh, I want to get my grandpa's tattoos that he had. Okay. He had a um, eagle and a coyote, and he passed away a couple years ago. Okay. So I just, I don't know. What did they signify to him? Do you know? Uh, Well, he was in the military, and so I think the eagle was basically kind of symbolic of his service. Okay. And then the coyote, he trapped his whole life, like from when he was five. And so, and t- until get, he died. I think you should get two wolves. <laughs> Everybody has two wolves in them, Michael. And we've discussed this. Sometimes Everybody both has, those wolves are bitches. <laughs> Everybody has two wolves deep inside of them. Yeah. Inside of you, <laughs> inside of me, there are two wolves. You're like, please stop, sir. Because they're both bitches. Please shut up. I, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear the rest of this sentence. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm starting on the cover-up next week. Oh, you are? Yeah. Okay, cool. What yeah. are you actually getting? Uh, I'll show you when it's done. Okay. Okay. I don't know if people would understand my explanation. Okay. Leah is slightly uncomfortable with it. Really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I'm. Will you tell me after the show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now I'm going to be trying to guess what it is. I assure you there is 0% chance you can guess it. What would your guess be? I've heard you mention a Japanese quarter sleeve. It is going to be a three quarter sleeve. Okay, but that is just more like where it's going to be. In right, right. It, not that's not what it is. It's Japanese. 
Oh, I actually don't even think it would necessarily be Japanese. Apparently, and I didn't know this, not attempting cultural appropriation, but a three-quarter sleeve, like above the watch, is apparently traditionally um, has something to do with the Yakuza, an mm-hmm. organization that I know nothing about other than they yeah, were, I believe, Japanese mafia. That's what I know about them. But there's going to be nothing on it that would be Japanese, like caric- caricature? Caricature. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I'll so it, but it's a three-quarter sleeve. Eventually, yeah. It's going to take a while. It'll probably take yeah. five or six sittings. Hmm. Okay. So. Are you doing it at a local place here? Yep. Yeah, from a guy at the gym, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know we had a tattoo artist. It's his first one, so, <laughs> yeah. He just needs some warm-up. He needs some, some skin to warm up on. <laughs> Perfect. It'll yeah. look good. <laughs> or not. <laughs> what else you got? Okay, let's see. Um, So how often in your service did you guys actually go underwater Ooh, as infrequently as possible uh a shit ton in training when we were doing diving blocks yeah i know of ooh, one combat swimmer operation that occurred pre 9 11 i don't know there are sdv operations that have occurred and people can google that just seal delivery vehicle and what that is and what they do I can't, I don't even know, I don't know shit about how often they were used, but there's a specific command for that. Outside of that command, I only know of one combat swimmer operation that occurred well before 9-11. Yeah. So I can't think of a single one. Yeah. I guess that makes sense, especially for the location you guys were in. Yeah. Um, We were near water often, rivers, streams, stuff like that. Yeah. but as far as going underwater operationally to like try to sneak up and pop, right, out, yeah. pop out of the water like they do in uh, what's that? Where he catches the guy. Fucking movie, Act of Valor. God damn it! Is that the one where he puts his hands? Yeah, up? Yeah, he puts his hands up. <laughs> they shoot a three hundred wind mag at the dude and like, oh, uh, just so you guys know, it's a supersonic round, right? So it'd be like all right, the way there'd through. There'd be a crack. I have my hands up there. Because <laughs> you know exactly how somebody's gonna fall, right? God, right, yeah. God. Fall straight back. I mean, sometimes. Uh, yeah, good luck with that. Um, man, it's the it's the core competency and the origin of the community, but the world just has not really thrown that at the community in any way, shape, or form. So, I mean, you train to that standard, right? but you just, you just don't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, would it even be any more practical than, or I guess useful than just I guess inserting in la- via land or air. It would depend on the circumstance. Some combat swimmer operations, the o- the only goal would be you know, we'd carry limpet mines on our back, so you would go underneath a vessel, mm. and there's the screws, the screw shaft, and there's oftentimes these uh, planes that come down oh. that help support the weight. Uh, what you would do is you would attack. I think they called them bow planes. I don't know why they called them bow planes. I might be wrong to that. But by detonating those or, or changing the shape of those, it would make the ship undrivable. So that's mm. like a combat swimmer attack against okay. a vessel. In that instance, that'd be the way to go unless you shoot a torpedo at the thing, I guess, which yeah. I suppose you could do, but you'd have to get a sub in range, and that would probably happen if they were out uh, in the ocean. Interdicting a, vis- a vessel at sea underway, that's going to be a BAF or a half, a boat assault force or a, he- a helicopter assault force. Mm. Um if it was a static vessel, though, like let's say it was uh, a vessel that was at port, it would it would be viable if you really wanted to get in quietly. Yeah. The thing with boats and helicopters, they're not silent. Yeah. Helicopters, you know, my first rotation to Afghanistan, we'd fly in on these helicopters and we'd get into the compounds like, where's everybody? <laughs> Does anybody live here? Yeah. It kept happening. We're, we're real fast learners, right? So, you know, right. a few yeah, months yeah. later. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's like, hey, let's get the ISR platform overhead, you know, Predator or Reaper. Yeah. It's like, oh, they're they're running about 10 minutes before we get there. <laughs> they can just hear you coming from yeah. miles away. Fuck, yes. Yeah. Especially with mountainous terrain where it, like, echoes. Right, yeah. So, yeah, it's, you know, pros and cons to everything. Right, right. For speed and violence of action, if you wanted that, that would be like a half-bath combo. You would attack the bridge you could uh, hook and climb over the side you could work your way to the engine room that would be like like more of a expedient violence of action technique Mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah cool um 
Have you seen those stolen Valor videos? Like the Don Shipley ones? I don't know who Don Shipley is, but basically okay. where people that somebody confronts oh, yeah. a guy well, in Oftentimes in they're in the airport. Yeah, yeah. Oftentimes, you know, it's amazing to me these people who go to these great lengths to find these uniforms, to put them on, to craft this story, and they don't take the fucking time to research how the <laughs> insignia should be worn. Yeah. yeah. Or wearing an enlisted man's uniform with officer insignia. Or the one that you see all the time. Yeah, this is my silver star with V. And I'm not even going to get into the military awards and what the V yeah, means. But yeah. there are some awards where it's not possible. A silver star, it is inherently given for valor in combat. Okay. You're so not you, going to put a V on it. Yeah, you don't really have to say that because that's what it's for. Correct. Like a Navy Cross. There's no such yeah. thing as a Navy Cross with a V. There's yeah. Bronze Stars with V because Bronze Star is the highest award you can give for meritorious and valorous conduct overseas. Be above that, <laughs> it's just kind of assumed yeah. that if you have a fucking Navy Cross or a Medal of Honor, yeah. that you don't need the V on the thing. And so yeah. that's what trips these people up a lot of times. They throw all this like garland on their yeah. shit. Yeah. And somebody, it. I can, if you're from that world, it's instantaneous. Yeah, you're like, that's not right. Yeah, or they have shit upside down. I, that happens all the time, too. Yeah. Um, or in the reverse order, because there's a hierarchy to mm -hmm. all of those medals as well. Or somebody will have a rank that is really low, but all these awards that would probably take years right. to get. So there's like yeah. this incongruence Doesn't between time sense. insurance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're fantastic. I love it when those people get caught. They're so funny. I have, But I have so many questions. Like, how fucked does your life have to be that you're going to make your life into a story that you know isn't true and try yeah. to get to bed every night yeah. knowing that you are living a lie. Yeah. I cannot wrap my head around that aspect of it. Yeah, no, I mean, especially because you know you don't know your shit. Yeah, and you know you're a liar. Yeah. You know that you're a liar. Yeah. And they wear that stuff in public because they are in. They want the reaction, not they're, from the person who knows no, what's up. They're trying to get a benefit. They're Some trying to get a benefit. benefit. They're yeah. trying to get thanked for their service. Yeah. You know. But what did, it was like when Chris Free was in here talking about when they d pulled the DD-214s at mm -hmm. the VA and they did mm -hmm. the and they went into the background. 50% of the DD-214s were fake. <laughs> These are people getting VA benefits and never served in the fucking military. That's crazy. It's insane. Yeah. Have you ever confronted somebody when you were like, I know that's not right? <sighs> no, because fortune has not smiled upon me yet. Oh. And I, I haven't been given the opportunity. Want to be there when you do? That would be so funny. They would just get options. I yeah. mean, the, and the options would be really simple. Listen, you know you're full of shit, and unfortunately, I know you're full of yeah. shit. You're gonna take off every item of yeah. military clothing that you're wearing. I don't give a shit what you have underneath. That's a yeah. problem that you can go solve. Or we're gonna escalate this to the next level, which is me taking those items off of you. Yeah. Whether you want me to or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Life's about the choices you make. I hope they say no. I kind of do, too. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoy fighting. I just... I know you do. I just avoid it at all costs, except yeah. for when I'm with my friends in environments where we're actually being kind to each other or because we're trying to get better. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, but those are... I love those videos. They're so funny. They'll never end, too. No, there's, there's always going to be somebody. Yeah. And again, always that goes back somebody. to the mental health, man. Yeah. Like, fuck. Um, you got time for one more. All right. What's the toughest one you have? <laughs> the most controversial. <laughs> You're shaking your head. You must have a <laughs> Tyler has ones that he wants me to show you, and I don't know if I even want to bring some of these up. Tyler as in my son. Yes, as in your son, fuck. Tyler. Do you want to hear one of Tyler's? Fire away. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to see. I, okay. <laughs> There's a TLC series. It's called like. TLC is, that's a, like a TV network, the, right? The Learning Channel. Yeah. Learning Channel. Okay. And it's like crazy, my crazy obsession or whatever. Okay. <laughs> There's one on there. There's a couple on there. Um, One of them is. Oh, God. This guy is in a relationship with his car. Oh, this is just mental health problems. Yes. Yeah. They're just highlighting funny mental health problems. Is it funny, though? Um, I mean, it's novel. It's novel, and it's actually heartbreaking. Yeah. How does Tyler find this stuff? Oh, <laughs> hold on. 
click on that. Sex with my car, strange addiction, had me at hello. This has 16 million views. Yep. Is he going to be dry fucking the exhaust pipe of this Corvette? Oh, God. Oh, God. He was licking the steering wheel. Oh, boy. Chase. So he's also gay. Oh, on look top at of that. <laughs> he is so hard underneath that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thoughts? I'm without words. I am without words. I oh, objectophilia is when a person develops a strong emotional and sexual relationship with an intim in, or inanimate object. You think that's a manual or stick shift? <laughs> I mean, it's got to be stick. Oh, the places that stick shift <laughs> has probably been. <laughs> I don't want to think about that. Is he just in there riding a hobby cock with a fucking oh. cowboy hat on? <laughs> a gimp mask, actually. Um, but yeah, he probably has sex with the tailpipe. <sighs> Do you think it's real? I, that's the thing is like, this could definitely be just something for views, but also there are some weird people out there. There are. We are surrounded. Human human beings are, we're far less sophisticated than I think we want to be. Mm. We're all, I think we're actually a lot more similar than we would want to believe that we are. Um, that's terrifying. What would you do if he was your neighbor? <laughs> and he went out there and he's just, he was, he was <laughs> like nibbling on the steering wheel. I don't know if I encountered that in real time for my neighbor, what I would do with that. I would just, I'd be like, what is going, like, what is going on over there? I mean, I probably would strike up a conversation and it would start like this. Hey, buddy. Hey, what the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, as long as he takes it in the garage to do more intimate things, then I don't really We're mind. Are talking about the real garage or the metaphorical garage? That is different terms depending the, the real on the garage. culture. The real garage. All right. <laughs> I mean, I hope he has a garage because uh, nobody wants to see that. No, they don't. Mental health is a... <laughs> Mental health is a real thing. For some I, people, it's not. I am so worried about my middle son right now because I would love to know how he found that video and why he thought he should share it with you. And then, in addition, not only did he share it with you, he recommended that you share it with me in a public setting. And I just okay don't know about the future of our fucking race. <laughs> If you didn't like that, you're not. You're gonna hate the other one that he wanted me to show you. Do tell. What is All it? All right. I mean, we're in it now. We're cannonballing into the deep end. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> is this? So, are, are, Nader <laughs> Bader. <laughs> My. I apologize to the world for what likely is my son's internet browser history and the fucking absolute animal that he may become. This is the Mater <laughs> Bader. <laughs> so if you're not familiar with who Lightning McQueen is, this was obviously the tow truck. This is hauling a different type of load than that tow truck, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Oh, there's a good shot. Oh, uh, Tyler, you <laughs> and I are having a conversation when you get home from Hawaii. Why so, would he think that this is a topic of relevant conversation? I don't know. And I don't even know. Well, first of all, I did see this on an Instagram meme. So I'm guessing that's where he saw it as well. Um, But yeah, he really... He told me about this a long time ago, and I... I bet he did. I never... I was like, yeah, maybe I'll bring it up. And then I guess today's the day. It, today is the day. For those of you who are audio only, I don't know if you should actually look at this or continue your life and pretend that you've never seen this. <laughs> what a high point to end it on, Michael. Yeah. Do you well, have anything else to add? Uh, no. Uh, just 
get yourself a major bait. Yeah, and don't yeah. tread on me. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs>